Brenda Butler and Dot Street. Can we have a round of applause for all of you? That's all. I didn't want to do this. Listen, uh, I, I didn't imagine 30 years ago that uh, we'd be, you know, two people would be interested in this, let alone all you people on a bank holiday weekend. I live in this country. My son's, my son's a scout here, and um, I do it all again. And uh, you can see, I can see by your faces, you know, you weren't wasting your time. It's nice to see all the debunkers that never had the balls to show up here. It's even, yeah. Really, they're not here. Um, it's great to see the young people. There's two young guys there, and there's a little girl back there, because they are the future, and uh, I'm a dad, and everything I did with this, um, with all the bad things that came and went, led me to my uh, son. And, uh, you know, this might be a good thing I did all those years ago, or a bad thing, but I'm a damn good dad, and I'm real proud of that, and it all led me to him. And uh, it's an honor, you know, uh, these heroes you're going to meet tonight, it's their first opportunity together to go through a profound thing, because it's a key to all this. And um, i got to say, you know, they're heroes, and the, the Nick's here too, little Nicky Pope, and Linda Howe, and Peter here, you know, and I'll get them after. And uh, I've had my time, I've had my time. It's done a lot of damage to my family, a lot of friends and all that, it's taken a lot of time to repair it. And when it comes to the people that did bad things with us afterward, I didn't retire from the military. I loved my country. I went in for all the right reasons. When it comes to the people that did things to us after the fact, all I want is their addresses. <laughs> I don't need an apology. But I'm not angry anymore. I'm a good place, you know, short, fat, middle-aged. You get their kids, believe me. They're our future. You're all heroes for being here, too. It's an honor to be in the same room with these heroes. And uh, thanks for coming on the ride for the last 30 years or so. God bless you. Congratulations to Linda Moulton Howe. Thank you very much. that I have been curious about and read about and heard about ever since Chuck DeCaro did the five-part series on CNN in the United States back in 1984, which was the first in-depth television exposure that a lot of us had, and I knew Chuck at the time. And he told me that there was a rumor I was abducted twice at 3 a.m. on <laughs> I can't find my father. Something that 
I'm not saying it's never been done, but what we've always found that will be done in Fox, and, and even one of the other things that stood out to me at the very beginning, about a year and a half ago, I wanted to do a reunion, and it didn't work out. It's hard to get over here, okay? So a lot of people weren't available or couldn't do it, whatever, but it ended up Jim and I were able to get back together and start talking about things and working on things. But what I've always noticed when you do these conferences, and I'm sure a lot of you did, usually you get informed on stuff, and very rarely do you get a chance to ask questions. Okay? Mm. And to us, again, going back to that 50 to 60 percent of people that might want to mess a little bit tonight, we feel the opportunity should be that you have a chance to talk to us, not we talk to you. So what we're going to do here is he's got a couple things to say, then I got a couple things to say, and then we're going to start taking questions. And we'll take them as long as you want to ask. Yep. Okay? All right. Go ahead. Well, I want to thank you guys for the charity. Okay. We really appreciate it. It's a good cause. Um, we also got, if you notice there's film coming, they're exclusive. Yes. The um, uh, profits that we have for this uh, are done here that we'll go to charity too. So uh, hopefully it's a lot of money. I'm hoping. <laughs> I don't know. So you grab it. What's that? Two thousand pounds already. I'm gonna tell you something that's uh, fun. Okay. Here's this is an unknown fact. Everybody thinks like we talk all the time. And the night I talked to him 30 years ago, and <coughs> what are you like Jew calling Jim? July. July. We only started talking nine months ago. We never talked about the incident until nine months ago. Because it was geared that way. You know, we all had uh, OSI involvement. We had our memories changed. This is a bizarre story. We went to the wrong locations on other documentaries. Uh -huh. The question you got to ask is why does someone want that to happen. Don't make no sense, does it? Why would they want to move the site 400 yards? Don't make any sense to us either, does it? And uh, we also had earlier, it was uh, Larry, I think he spoke. Larry's got some issues too from the incident. Um, all of us do. Um, we're going to try to answer what we can. And I think you want to give us some, some information on the landing site. Go ahead, John. Okay, first of all, I don't know how many of you have ever looked at my statement. Um, one of the things with me is that this is the first time I've ever been back, okay? I came back one other time in the early 90s and did a piece for Strength is True, but I never got to come down here. It, was, it didn't, wasn't in the cards. But finally, after 30 years, I finally come back to the force. And some of the questions that have been always presented to me is where were we? And I've always been honest, I'm not sure. Because one of the things that we noticed when we went back out there and went over for the next couple nights, if you look at some of the areas that they claim they think it is, it's really not physically possible to get where we went from here to here, especially based on our statements and where we were going. And one of the other interesting things is some of them have us way over here, but we came in over here. And one of the things that we did in training was when we were following this, we went directly to the closest route to go in and follow it and kept going straight forward. We didn't zigzag all the way through the forest, go way over here, way over there, and everything else. And based on my statement, and going back out there, we've come to the conclusion we were definitely to the right of the farmer's house. There's a finger of land that I think Linda showed earlier that comes out there, which will explain how we got wet and even how Colonel Hawk claims he got wet. When I say claims, he said he's gotten wet. And if there's a cricket in there, there's a string of crit marsh, a marsh, okay? So it would explain how we got wet, okay? And even in my hypnosis, we, I kind of go around, how did we get wet? Well, there's an area right there that shows how we got wet. So the site itself was in the area to the right of the farmhouse, as best as we can term it, okay? The next thing is, is as you can see with the hypnosis, it's been out for a few months, but it's never been out. You know, it's not been out that long, and I don't know if it's ever been shown over here. But I think if you look at the way we're talking underneath it, and people can question whether it's legit or not as far as where we let or anything else.
But in my case, I was just asked to talk about what happened and that's what came out. So that in itself is hard to explain and it's hard to do with as a person because one of the things that's clear is I was out there twice. I was the only person who was out there on the first night and I was out there on Colonel Hall's night, okay? And something strange happened to me both nights, okay? And we had said we're going to rebuild some new evidence, okay? And here it comes, all right? And it's going to be a big one. And it's strange how it has happened. But it's factual. It's there, and it happened in October. <laughs> Through the fact that we were trying to do this and come over, and we wanted to come over here and do this and everything else, we got together in Phoenix. Okay, and on Thursday night, December 30th, it's going to air on the history channel. Okay, and when Jim was sitting there, and you talk about a moment beside what happened was out there, he started talking about how he had a download. Okay. And that in itself, people go, well, okay, well, he remembers the download. But it was notebook. And he's going to answer a couple questions about the 27th. And, and looking at his notebook, we understand why the 27th came up. But in his notebook, the day after, go ahead and tell you what he did. Yeah, through the magic of uh, television, I have probably in that notebook, uh, I don't know, 18 pages done, you know, from that night. Six things, six pages I wrote around the craft. That's the scribbled mess that you see because I was terrified. <laughs> okay, and I was terrified out there at that point in time. Those there have went public. Documentaries have been done on it. That's all they want. The documentary people have had it filmed. They've done their cameras on them. But all they have to do is go ahead and start looking back into it. And back into it. And this is where the 27th date comes in. I do say the 27th in there. Why would that be a wrong date? It's not a wrong date. The incident happened on the 26th. But the 27th, I had this, I went back to home. I'm down in the church, four Blenheim Road, and I think they took my house down. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> anyway, I'm down there, and I got this courage uh, because the pictorials are in front of my uh, Go through my head. I mean, it's just crazy. It's like ones and zeros, ones and zeros. So I get my notebook back out because continuity, us in the Air Force have continuity. And I write 27 down. And I start recording one zero 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 one 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 zero zero one one zero one zero zero. Oh, I can I can remember. That's exactly what's written. I can go through the whole thing. Okay. Why? Isn't that weird? Wrote them all out. About eight pages. Longer than that. Twelve pages. Once I did that, it stopped. I had relief. Um, so, notebooks put away. I have no urge. I have no desire to ever write anything about or talk about it because it's, uh, it's probably rubbish. It's probably gibberish, okay? All I know is I was in a mental state at the time that was not good. Um, John and I were kept apart on purpose. It was done by the other side. We have this on the uh, um, tape that was done. Run this or yeah? Right okay. You have that on the tape, right? <clears throat> but we could not get back together again because if we did, we discovered the truth. And so with that hypnotic suggestion, that's what happened. Bear with me. This is bizarre. So I do stuff with Colonel Hall. Documentaries come over here. Nothing happens. Go to the wrong sites. Film the wrong stuff. Hall is also part of the cover-up, by the way. You know that? He was under orders. Whether he admits it or not, he was under orders by the OSI. The ongoing investigation was going on. Immediately, that tells everybody in the Air Force, whoop, hands off, ongoing investigation. OSI can investigate anybody on that base. They don't work for the wing commander, they don't work for the commander, but they do brief the wing commander, hey, we have an investigation going on, but we can't talk about it. Right? Uh, where am I at? 
So, Paul tells me in 19, no, 2000, or in 1996, we do a, what was that show over here? It's a nice sci-fi No, one that you and I, Stranger Truth. Stranger Truth. What a crock that was. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe he called that thing a tank. That's what it looked like. Anybody I'd say I love documentaries. Call a tank. It don't look like a tank, it doesn't look like the side of a tank. Do that. Anyway, we're going over to that show. Halt does not let me have contact with him. If I go to the for breakfast, Halt comes down and sits with us. Whatever it was, he kept us apart. Then after we get back to the States, I need to get a hold of John. I want to talk to John. I have questions. Chuck tells us, can't get a hold of him. He's gone. No longer lives in Chandler, Arizona. Huh. Okay, have you tried to get a hold of him? Don't worry about it, Jim. We'll get a hold of him. I'll do it. Your ex space commander will do it for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Can't get a hold of him. So it goes away. I think John's in, I don't know, La La Land somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> then you call. He calls me one. Last fall. And then uh, that's the idea for the He says, Jim, I go, John, glad to hear you. Glad to hear you. I'm looking for you. He goes, You know what we gotta do? I said, Yep. Yeah, we have to go back to Rivers. We both do it. 1996. I wanted to do a book. I don't know why. I guess I want my story out and be accurate. And I was with an author called A.J. Esrell, Sally Rail. Anyway, it would turn into trying to make money off this story. Didn't want nothing to do with it. I sent her an email. The email says, sorry, Sally, I like you. You're a good person. But no, we're not going to do it. And at the end, I said, but I know you're looking for answers. But the answers we solved December 2010, 1996, July. <coughs> John, how many years have you been about? Well, I just knew we needed to get together. We needed to figure so out. So that's what happened with the phone call. It was automatic. Yes, go back to the wrench. So, uh, and everything we did, got a hold of the bone hall, John Moore. I've done some work with it before. It was okay. Nothing personal. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> Um, then, uh, when they got in contact with Prometheus Entertainment, who does this, some, among other things, they did an ancient alien series. They were fascinated by the story. And uh, so, and uh, like I said, when we went down the Phoenix uh, shoot, that's when I brought up the codes for the first time. And I think that's in the show on the 30th, it's going to say, we had the answers in front of us all the time. We did. They're always there. We're going to be ciphered right now. Uh, Linda has sources that we're doing. We got two sources. Now, don't take my word for that. First of all, I can't get through algebra. <coughs> I'm not very good at math. Anyway, algebra is like a rough in school. So I don't know how I could actually write this binary code on But the. Uh, uh, the fascinating part about the, the binary code on it is that we're going to prove. How are we going to prove this? All? I know how we're going to prove it. There's a test. John tells me I get glass of water. Thank you. Right. Um, excuse me. This sucks. <coughs> Anyway, John says there's a test. Don't take my word on it. This is about facts, okay? Don't take my word for it. It's all about facts. Anybody get something in front of you, you better ask me. I want facts, buddy. I don't want you to just sit there and say this the way it was. Those guys you gotta watch out for. They're trying to make money off this, okay? They don't want the truth. One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna test the paper. That paper should say 1980. The ink. I should say 1980. So this was written right after the incident of 1980. John? <laughs> anyway, okay. 
basically from me, when we were sitting there in Phoenix that day, when we got together, and I knew we needed to get together and we needed to come over here. Now there's a set of couples, okay? And I, I don't know how many people understand what they mean, because I totally don't myself still this day, but I did do some checking, and it is, it is factual there are by many couples. I can't give you exact details how they're downloaded or how, what they mean and everything else, but there is a message. It didn't just come back with the numbers, but there is a message to be by many couples. And the thing about it is, it, it'll come out on what it is on the 30th, but the point being is, is it's clearly gone to a different level because of the fact that something was downloaded. And for him to be able to write these numbers out and they mean something, to me, is unbelievable. And for me to sit down and look at it and get told that that's what they mean and they've been analyzed is, is unbelievable. So do you want me to go and say it's alien again? No, I can't do that. I never have. But what I can tell you is this. And that's why we wanted to go out to the gate tonight for those who wanted to go out there. We came on duty. We were doing our job. Okay? We saw something strange. Okay? We didn't add up. And I've been here almost two years. Okay? It affected the guy that was with me. He didn't even want to go out there to figure out, to figure out what it was. We went, we went out to see what it was. There was some kind of static electricity in there right at the end of the room. Okay? The lights were weird in the forest. And that's where I want to go to the lighthouse right now. Probably a lot of you already been out there, but you'll take a look. The lighthouse doesn't come into play at the gate. It doesn't come into play at the end of the road. It doesn't come into play in the first part of the forest. Okay? So whatever we were seeing at that point wasn't the lighthouse. Okay? So for the people that want to argue that point, okay, when you get way on that field, you can see a blinking light. But there was no lighthouse at the beginning all the way through. Okay? The meteor story, I can't dispute whether or not a meteor went down, but a meteor goes down. It, it's been reported it didn't crash in this area, it was just flashed across the sky. So therefore, whatever was in the forest obviously was a meteor, okay? There was definitely a static charge there, okay? A lot of people have come up to me and or told me over the years there's some kind of energy put out there anyway, okay? But there was definitely a static charge. It's hard to really figure totally out because you're going at night. We're telling everybody to understand. If you go out there at night, you don't understand. When we went out there, we didn't know exactly where it was. And I can't tell you to this day exactly in the forest where it was, but I can tell you it was to the right of this. It was in here and it moved back here and it went across the field. And based on my statement and what I felt and remembered going back out there, it happened down there. I feel to the right of the farmer's house. And we had some kind of contact in the forest. We had some kind of contact out in the field, okay? And from statements that have been made to me over the years on what Jim remembers, and he's going to talk a little bit about what he remembers and what hypnosis, but there was something that happened, okay? And then from there, we went farther back. So all I'm saying is it, it wasn't a lighthouse. It wasn't a helicopter. It wasn't a Apollo capsule coming down from the helicopter. It appears to be something, and I say appear because the, the initial report's going to come out on what was the initial codes, and the rest of them are being looked at. But it appears to be he has some kind of download. Okay? Now, I'm not an expert, and I can't tell you how it was downloaded, why it was downloaded, and who downloaded it. But there's something there that shows certain things that are hard to deal with. Okay? And the fact that if you look at where we feel the site was, it pushed more to the right, which pushes out towards Capitol Green. Okay? And that's where some of the other stories come out, that some other stuff happened out there. So it's clear that a lot of the, or the stuff took place to the right. Now, I got a question for you before you start asking this question, go a little farther. How many of you been out in that field tonight? Okay. Uh, a lot. Okay. How many of you been out in the field where have you gone? Have you been to the left of the farmer's house or to the right of the farmer's house? <laughs> Everywhere, okay. Okay, have you ever noticed, do you remember, everybody remember how Colonel Hall says the house glows? It glowed red? Remember how he's made that statement? It still glows too. It's too. But it's not from the craft. It's not from an alien encounter, but it's from the lights in the house. And when I went back out there two nights ago, 
the house looked exactly like it did when he described it, only at a certain point in the field. Which tells you again, we were to the right, we were down by that finger of trees, and something, something very strange happened out there. Okay? And I came back here to try to understand it. Okay? I went into hypnosis because I was told I went into something twice, which I don't remember. And I honestly don't. But under hypnosis, it says I did. Okay? His hypnosis opens up a lot of things that's there. And he wasn't let. Now, how it got there, I can't tell you. But what I can tell you is this, it's there. And that in itself is kind of strange, wouldn't you agree? I don't think we sat down and wrote a nursery rhyme or story out trying to figure you know, things come out. We went under and this stuff came out. Okay? And I understand people argue about hypnosis and say, well, you could have been misled or this could happen. I'm not going to sit here and argue with that because I'm not the expert on that either. But a lot of what came out was just what happened in the flow. So there's one or two answers to that one, basically. Either that's what really happened or somebody put that down. And who wouldn't put that down? And why wouldn't it happen? So when I go into hypnosis, I'm sitting here thinking, well, this will help it clear it up. It didn't. Okay? When he introduced the code, or the codes, which I never knew about, I mean, my look on my face that night was probably the same as what it was when whatever it was in the premise. Then they have the codes initially looked at and verified by two or three sources that they all come up with some of the same individual stuff. But some of it will be revealed on Thursday night. It's kind of hard to deal with. And I'm going to be honest with you. And that's where some of the people now start talking about the human toll. The human toll on Larry Warren, on Jim Penniston, on myself, on Adrian Bustins, and everybody else. And to be honest with you, most of us can't give you a straight answer of what it was, why it was here, what happened to us, but we know something happened to us. As you can see from our humor on those t-shirts, it wasn't the lighthouse. It wasn't a helicopter. It wasn't a space capsule. Could it have been military? I don't know. I mean, that's kind of for you to decide. You've got to think about, did we have that technology back then? Did we have that technology? Okay? Could have been alien? I don't know. How many of you saw Colonel Conrad's statement that was released unauthorized? He said to Dave Clark that it could have been ET. He doesn't know. Okay? So the base commander has openly admitted he doesn't even know what happened to us. Now he has some feelings, but he did list that it could be ET. So this is a man who's in charge of the base. Okay? The other wing commander. I don't know how many of you seen this short interview he did, but he basically said I could put Humpty Dumpty back together. I don't know what that means. He wouldn't confirm or deny the incident happened, but he was very upset that the Halt memo came out. Okay? And why would they put a Halt memo out? Okay, I can't answer that. 13 days later. Yeah, 13 days later, but it came out. It's not factual in the dates, some of the things that went on, but it's a, it basically put together something that said a lot of different things that so happened a lot of different ways. But what I'm trying to get to is this is a, this has helped me to come back and to realize some things, but it just the story hasn't ended, and I don't know if it ever will. But there are some things in there that I can't explain. I don't know why they're there. I don't know why they're happening, but it seems to be taking a timeline, and it's it's really hard to deal with some. And what I'd like to do here is to thank you all for coming and listening to what we're having to say here. And we're trying to give you an idea about what we've been dealing with and what we're feeling about. And it wasn't intentional that we didn't release some of this information. It's just the way it's happened. And it's there. The notebook will verify it. And it will be presented as evidence. But something very strange happened to us. And I think Jim's got a couple more things to say, and then we'll be happy to take as many questions as you want to ask. The cover-up is probably the major part of this. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not sure the dates. Uh, was it a Friday? I don't know. Tell what night was the first night? Friday? It started Thursday night. Thursday night. And then, uh, uh, then we had the GSM with John again, and uh, Hawk and just the monkey numbers. And uh, so Monday morning, I, I get a call before I go to work from Ipswich, because our early work. Report the OSI building. Really. Don't tell anybody. I ride with John. I think I'm going to work. So, 
Don't want to work, John. I'll drop you off. I got some stuff to do, and then we'll go over and see Carl Hall because they were told to do that. So I got out the OSI building, and I'm not saying it was OSI. It was in the building. Okay, I know every OSI agent. I'm a cop. I know. I didn't know these two guys. Who are they? They're in suits, and they were nice guys. They wanted to buy me cokes. They wanted to. Make sure my career was intact and I want the truth. Write a statement. Don't hold anything out. Don't worry, we'll classify it. No problem. I was scared to death. I told them everything. Go to the Four or five pages. Gave that to them. Still waiting down there. Come back in about 20 minutes, they do. They hand me a typed statement. The typed statement that you see on the internet is supposed to be my. Statement. I don't. I don't. It isn't signed. It isn't dated. But it's been released as my statement. No, it's the OSI or those two officers I've talked to. Their cover story. It's generic. It's metallic crap. You got within 50 meters. Blah blah blah. The rest is history. I said, What am I supposed to do with this story? You're going to tell this to anybody who investigates it. Your command element. Another investigation. Security police. Whatever it is. This is the story. Read it, remember it. Okay, that's an order. Investigation come on. So I go through all that, and I do my best job I can to remember that stupid thing, right? Uh, so I go pick up John, go down to Colonel Halt's office. He plays just a silly tape. I mean, I've heard it a hundred times. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, so what does this mean, Colonel? Oh, it means that I believe you guys. Okay. He wants to do statements. Okay, so we do statements. Sit John on one end of the conference table and me on the other, so I guess we can't, you know, make the statements together, so I don't know. And so I write mine out, handwritten, dated it, signed it, did my drawings. John did the same thing. Aaron Kabazak did the same thing. The statements that are released, it's my statement, it's not my statement. It's the one from OSI, it's the cover story. You guys have been reading the cover story for 30 years. Good job, right? What a cover up. Everyone can ban that. He wasn't too uh, uh, new, he was new to the park. It, you know, he's easy to work. He's an airman. Brand new. Here's your type statement on the form. Sign it. Well, they kind of read it. Sign it. He signed it. He's scared to go. The only thing. They probably can have happened is something with John. Maybe John on his sodium panel call could have his memory changed, altered, or something. Thank God. We used that statement to find the, whole, the actual <coughs> enemy site. If it wasn't for that, I mean, he was just an airman. Maybe that was it. Don't worry about it. They got the security supervisor. He's taken care of. They got the deputy base commander. He's taken care of. They got the ship commander. He's taken care of. You guys see what happened out here? The truth is here. We're telling it to you. As hard as it is, this is the truth. No lies. I'm not selling a book. I'm not making a movie. This is the truth. <coughs> John? All right. I'll take questions. Questions? If you want to step up one at a time. And you got to speak up loud. I got scared of you. You come up and ask the questions so everybody can hear it. So go ahead and make it. Can we put a, a brief highlight to some of the Q&A session? Uh, because uh, the conference like this would not be complete without the British viewpoint. He's our resident expert on all matters supernatural. Uh, he's a he was uh, head of uh, UFO inquiries at the NID uh, some many years ago. Um, but it's my, uh, my final pleasure to introduce you, Mr. Nick Pope. Thank you very much.
imitate this. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm not going to steal too much time because I know you've got loads of questions for the guys. Um, but I'll, I think I'm going to be sitting on this panel too, so maybe if there's anything for me, throw it my way. I'm literally going to maybe just make a few observations based on my 21 years working for the Ministry of Defence, three years of which, as many of you may know, was spent on the UFO project, which was something I did from 1991 through to 1994. One thing that I have not said before, um, except to the guys, I think, on a radio show, but I, want, I wanted to kind of say it to you both in person. Um, I did not even join the Ministry of Defence until uh, 1985. Uh, so I certainly wasn't there at the time of the incident, though subsequently I undertook what police would call a cold case review of this. i can say a couple of things about that in a minute. But even though I don't feel that I have done anything wrong here, I just sort of, as the nearest thing there is perhaps to an official spokesperson, I actually want to say sorry to you guys. You know, so... You were let down, which you clearly were, by your own government, by the chain of command, then in so much as it means anything coming from me, and I'm not sure that it does, but I am very sorry for, for the fact that you were put through this, and I hope that today is, is going to be something that is cathartic for you and helps you, you know, deal with this, because I know that uh, I, I've met you several times, I mean that's a big part of your lives, and I really hope that um, this, this is helpful to you. One thing that I would say about the Ministry of Defence's position on this, and it's a sound bite that I'm sure all of you are familiar with, the standard Ministry of Defence line on the Rendlesham Forest incident is actually the same as it is for the UFO phenomenon uh, as a whole. It's this no defence significance quote. Well, let me tell you, you know, that is a kind of standard knee-jerk reaction that we trotted out every single time any member of the public or media representative asked us about UFOs. UFOs, no defence significance, because what else could we say? And you know what? Most times, we were right. Because, of course, most times it did just turn out to be misidentifications of aircraft flights, weather balloons, etc. But on this occasion, absolutely take this to the bank. This event was of extreme defence significance. And I'll tell you why. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a believer or a sceptic. It doesn't matter whether you think this was uh, Russian or Martian. It doesn't matter if you think this was extraterrestrial, interdimensional, intertemporal. If you have an object over arguably two of the most sensitive bases in the entire NATO alliance, and if this thing does what these people and many, many others say that it did, firing light beams down at the ground, firing light beams at their position, firing light beams possibly into the weapon storage area itself, then you know it doesn't matter, like I say, whether you're a believer or a skeptic. It's a defense issue. It's a national security issue. It's a security breach. So don't listen to the no defense significant soundbite. And if I ever wrote to any of you saying that, I apologize. Um, it was the party line. Um, <laughs> the cold case review. Uh, this was just me sitting down, going through the files in 1994, uh, doing what police officers would do with an unsolved crime. And it's interesting, one of my subsequent postings in the MOD was to a security uh, division where I worked alongside uh, military cops. So I actually got to know a fair bit about the uh, police mindset and the investigatory process. And it, it was very interesting. We always used to say that a UFO sighting was much like a crime. 
if you solved it in the first 24 hours, 48 tops, you know, fine. If you didn't, your chances of getting to the bottom of it became vanishingly small very, very quickly. So I did this cold case review, hoping that some new piece of information would come to light. But essentially what I found was a situation where both the British and the American government, whether by accident or design, were, I think, complicit in a cover-up, not necessarily with most of them of knowing what this was and hiding it, but almost not knowing what it was or what to do. It was very clear to me, for example, that um, you know, the British were saying, well, clearly this is something that the Americans dealt with, they investigated at the time, because they waited so long to report it, clearly they didn't think this was very important, they had matters well in hand. We also know that the Americans were saying pretty much the same thing. Well, it happened off base, and as General Baisley said, uh, that makes, and, and um, this was taken to the weekly meeting of 3rd Air Force, and uh, the general almost rubbed his hands with glee and said, it's a British issue because it happened off base. So you have this situation where arguably both the British and the Americans had jurisdiction, but each thought or perhaps hoped that the other had primacy. Now, what this meant was that we had a uh, pretty much a, a situation where either or both parties to this could take a step back and say, well, you know what, we needn't get too worried about this. Um, the other side have got it in hand. And the proof of this is uh, perhaps one of the biggest failings of the entire investigation. Any investigator, any cop will tell you uh, that there are a very small number of things that will fatally undermine any investigation. One is delay. We had that. The date on Holt's memo. A second thing that will foul up an investigation is poor information sharing. <coughs> the Ministry of Defence didn't get these witness statements and these sketches, but neither did the USAF get the defence intelligence staff assessment of radiation levels taken at the landing site. So both the USAF and the MOD had important information which we didn't share with the others. So delay and poor information sharing and the lack of putting one single individual in charge of an investigation. Instead you had multiple investigations multiple agencies, people coming on and off base that even those there weren't familiar with. This was a recipe for confusion. Um, you know, maybe that confusion was deliberate, maybe it wasn't. Well, with, with those very few brief observations in mind, I really want to uh, turn it over um, to the Q&A session now. And, um, I'm not sure if it's Linda going to join us out, out here. I want to say something. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm not, I'm not there. I don't want to give you no secret information because I want to keep my retirement check. <laughs> but I will neither confirm nor deny you your weapons on that base. Okay? All right? But we have to be able to go anywhere, any place, any time, American forces, even whether they're stationed here or whether they're stationed on the road. I was PRP. What is that? You ever hear of PRP? Personal Reliability Program. That means I could actually provide security for nuclear weapons, delivery systems, okay? The guys I work for could too. And there's a DOD um, directive, 5200 something. And there is a OSI directive. There is a Air Force Security Directive. There is a Department of Defense Additional Directive. It goes on and on. That says, if the behavior or a situation comes up that's suspicious of an individual that's PRP, this has to happen immediately. You must relieve the person of duty. You must send them over to the hospital, have a psych evaluation done, and then, there's that's temporary decertified. Then they have 
30 days to decide if we're going to be permanently decertified on PRP, which means you're worthless <laughs> in the United States Air Force, or put you back to duty. We never got relieved of duty. I, as a sergeant, if I thought he was acting funny, different, report him. I had no choice. I had to do that. Everybody had that responsibility. Ask yourself, why would anybody not do that unless they knew it was true? They knew it happened out there. That's why they never even, they want to pull our PRP. This has never came up. That is one of the things that we're going to discuss tonight. The United States Air Force said, Jim, that's okay. You can go back to work. No problem. Take a day off. So <laughs> simply You know what else they did? All right, I got a top secret SCI, sense of heart mental information, background investigation. My clearance is upgraded. And I'm also given a top secret cosmic atomic. God, that sounds good. A NATO top secret. I'm, get, I'm upgraded one week after a I'm working flight. I don't need it. Why would they do that? <coughs> Three weeks later, guess what the Air Force does to me? Thank you very much. They make me non-commissioned officer in charge of security police, plans, and programs. <laughs> I write all security regulations, all base defense plans, all security requirements for forward operating locations in Germany, and our war plans, by the way, which we used just recently in Afghanistan, it was top secret. And I didn't know what I was doing. They had a training. <laughs> it took six months to train in that job. They gave me two guys to work for me. I don't know what I'm doing. Why would they do that? Do you think there's a cover-up going on? Do you think they want to watch me? Do you think they want to control me? Colonel Hall got promoted with rank. They, they moved him to uh, another location. Uh, but Colonel Hall was working for our side, because he was under orders. All officers, good officers, follow orders. How is it that what you're saying now is affecting you? How come up the OSI on you now? Well, I don't think it was OSI. I actually think it was DIA or NSA. Is there any problems following you around now? Yeah, we've had problems, yes. Our security is an issue. Yeah, sure. I just want to make one comment before we go to the formal Q&A, and it's just by way of a personal tribute to someone who those of you who have followed the case will be familiar with, Georgina Bruni, who sadly passed some time ago, but who gave so much, I think, to this case, both in terms of identifying witnesses and giving them a damn hard time, um, and, and indeed uh, the photographs, files, um, Georgina Bruni, you know, God bless her, made such a wonderful contribution. We pay tribute to her this evening. Um, and I should just say, uh, Charles Holt told me very recently, um, God, he said, being interviewed by Georgina was like being grilled by OSI. She would have taken that as one heck of a compliment. So now, Q&A. How do you guys want to do that? From you guys want to do that? Want to do that? Hello, Brenda? No, I didn't pick up one of those things.
Do some more. Farmer actually moved his desk, and I was speaking to him. Hey, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. You remember me? Oh, all right. When was the last time you talked to me? When was the time you had me? Uh, you were investigating. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Brenda had the full opportunity to get the full story before it was classified. <laughs> she blew it. She asked me one question. The first question. Do you have nuclear weapons out there? <laughs> I said, can't confirm it tonight. Goodbye. Well, she could have the whole story. It wasn't classified at that point. I really don't believe you give me that. That's the truth. Anyway, That's true. Yeah. yeah, because the news of the world had put that out, and I wanted to talk. <laughs> That's so I hit that a little bit of information for you. Okay, thank you. Um, no, that's, uh, that's a different one, Garth. I just want to ask about the farmer because I don't really know which one you're referring to, but the farmer who actually did go from my key moved to Devon, um, that was the guy who escaped and did a taxi or a taxi, if that's what you're talking about. He must have paid money to go down Cornwall, so he could turn up. I wasn't going to repeat that, Garth. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have a question. Um, does Chuck Holt know that you know? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. Okay. And when we walk out here tonight, and even the ones that go out into the forest tonight, you're going to get a view of what we were dealing with. But there'll probably be more questions now than there were before. But ultimately, let's ask a couple of serious questions, okay? I think most people are familiar with the case. Chuck Hall claims that he wasn't in here. Chuck Hall claims that nobody talked to him about it. There was no discussion at wing headquarters. The, the wing commander really didn't know what was going on. And ask yourself one question. And I'm just going down the line on this. What, what would the wing commander not want to know about what went on? Why would it, the deputy base commander be out in the field on a night making a tape recording? You've all heard the tape recording. Now, we know for a fact that there's people out there that believe it was fabricated. Fabricated, that came in box. But it wasn't. That's the real deal. He was experiencing something that was happening to him. Okay? And it wasn't the planets, it wasn't stars, it wasn't the White House. And the fact that he wants to now come back and try to sell to you that he'll tell you what he saw, but he won't tell you what happened behind the scenes. What's that tell you? Okay. Um, I made a harsh statement when I first put out for us all to get back together that I thought the man level let us down. Okay, that's open to your determination whether they did or not. But if you work for a company and you went out and did your job and you were left out hanging to dry the way we were with no support, how would you feel? Okay? But we didn't go out there because we asked to go out there. We got told to go out there. We were ordered out there that night. We had something strange going on. And in fact, we should never have went out there. Because the issue comes up, why did we go out there? Okay, and there's been speculation, and even uh, our ship commander recently tried to go on the record and say, well, nothing really happened. <laughs> well, the question is, is why did we send this out there? It was off base. There was nothing happening on the base when we saw what we saw. It was clearly in the base. They got a hit on radar, and he admitted that, and now he doesn't want to talk about it. But there was a hit on radar that something went down in the forks. Okay, so we go out and do our job. We're asked to make a statement, we did. Now here's something that has been danced around before, but the other thing that I don't think most of you understand, and it even goes back to Colonel Hall on this one, none of us planned on this ever coming out, okay? We did We were told that it wouldn't, okay? We were, we were confused after it happened. We couldn't understand what it was. We couldn't understand what we were doing with it. And I want a lot of you to go back to 1980, not today, not with the internet, Facebook, computers, cameras, instant everything. We were in the dark ages, if you think about it, in 1980, okay? And when it happened, it was easy to contain, but they should have at least helped us, and they did. They, they asked for a statement, and then they let us hang out there. And then along comes Larry Warner, and I, I've made comments before, but he feels the story needs to come out. And I can't say that he was wrong, okay? And he got the story out. And he worked his butt off to do it, okay? And yet, the Air Force didn't do anything for us, 
Okay? The only thing they, re they never said officially was, we stand by Colonel Hall's statement that something happened that day. So we, we haven't been treated fairly. Colonel Hall hasn't been completely honest. Okay? So I think the only determination I can make is that he was part of the cover up in some way, shape, or form. I can't get down to the T. I can't get down to the T whether or not those holes in the ground were rabbit holes or not, okay? But I've never seen a rabbit hole glow or have radiation in it, okay? And there was a guy out there that was disaster preparedness that got a reading out of those, out of those indentations in the ground. There was, a, there was some radiation on the trees. Now, I, it was above background, the MOD has said it was, okay? So that in itself, we should have been taken care of, but we weren't. We were left out hanging the dry. And the people that were in charge of us haven't supported us, okay? And, and I'm not happy about it. I don't think it's right. And whether or not it's fair or not, I know what it is. Or maybe they, really, I've come to the conclusion I'm not sure they knew what they were doing. So, but it hasn't been done right. And there's been a lot of different things that have happened that weren't right. So I hope that helps. And an ironic twist about Colonel Hall. I interviewed him a year ago and talked to him for probably about 90 minutes. In those 90 minutes, he was using obscenities that I could not put out on the air about his higher superiors. He was enraged, and this was his bottom line. Whether or not he was told to mix up dates or to be part of a cover-up, now, 30 years later, his anger seems to be real that he felt like that decisions were being made up the line of command <coughs> by Gabriel and Baisley and uh, perhaps Conrad and Williams that he was left out of even though he felt that he had responsibility. Well, in that interview, he said that only in the last three or four years or so after he had left his office in the Pentagon, his last official uh, position, because now he's retired. He said that he knew a man who worked for the National Security Agency at Fort Meade, made communication, asked if, he, if there was a file on bent waters, and he, Colonel Halt, retired, wanted to see it if there was, and the answer was, yes, we have a thick file, but you don't have a need to know. And then he said, I'm convinced that the National Security Agency took over the Bantwaters investigation right from the beginning. Okay, that's cool. Come on up. So Colonel Hall told me and Larry when we met with him face to face and we recorded an hour and 20 minute interview, 99% of which is reproduced and left to the escape, that one of his problems with Larry was Larry had claimed that the NSA was interested in him that Larry's records were confiscated uh, in the autumn of 81, even the most innocuous ones, and um, why would they be interested in an airman and not a colonel who had both been allegedly involved in this event. He told us that he had asked an associate at the Pentagon what was up on that, and he said, in all my years in the military, nobody has ever gotten back to me faster on the Pentagon, from the Pentagon, and they confirmed that yes, they were interested in him and his records were confiscated in the autumn of 1981, that they were not in the National Military Archives, they were in Fort Meade, Maryland, and that nobody had ever gotten back to him faster on anything, again, in all his years in the military. First of all, it's nice to see you all here, and <laughs> everybody else. Uh, this is probably directed at Nick. Um, when I first met Colonel Holt, he informed me that the memo was not to be released, and that he was, he said, well, the Americans shouldn't have released it. Uh, and, oh, no, sorry, I get it right. He said, Ministry of Defence said they shouldn't release it. And I said, well, it wasn't the Ministry of Defence, it came from the States. Uh, he then explained to me that Don Morland was the one that told him to write it out and send it. Anyway, going ahead a few years, when Brenda and myself 
uh, believe Jenny Rand who went to the Ministry of well, Ministry of Defence, and we, we had to take with us. And they said, and the first thing they said, well, how did you get Chuck's tape? Now, considering that Colonel Holt has said that he'd never been there, never actually talked to the Ministry of Defence, why did they call him Chuck and not Colonel Charles Holt? Well, I don't know why they did that. Uh, what I do know is that, um, obviously, we were going back to the release of the memo, this was in an era where, while the US already had their Freedom of Information Act, we didn't have ours. Um, but I know, and I've spoken to Colonel Holt about this many times, as have others on this panel, uh, Charles Holt's view uh, about the release of the memo was, no, don't do that, it'll kill my career. He said, burn it. And then it was Don Morland, probably the Morland, that told told him to write it, Yes. as far as I know, it's Don Morland that sent it to the Ministry of Defence. That, that's correct. The Ministry of Defence did have that document. Yes. And yet when I first on the phone to them, they said, oh, we don't know anything happening in Mendelssohn Forest. Well. Who's cuckoo? Don't, don't forget, I mean, the thing in, in the civil service culture, as in the military culture, people are posted uh, every two or three years. So, you know, the person that you speak to is not necessarily the person that was dealing with something at the time. You know, bureaucracy rather than conspiracy is very often the Yeah, I've come across it several times. Can I just say one more thing? As we... Just one question. Uh, as regards to the tape, on it, uh, he was out in the forest with it. On the, on the copy I've got, you can't hear the bracken. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to uh, say uh, well done to your SNF guys for coming forward. A very brave thing to do. In the XRF, and myself, I can understand the British House have felt to come forward. I'd like to ask Nick Pope, um, uh, you mentioned that it was of different significance uh, what happened, but previously the NID line was of no different significance. Uh, I'd like to know what you, you think of the NID line that um, the um, radar camera, RF intercept, was turned off at 1527 Zulu on the 27th. What are your views on that? Did any change? No, I think one can look at the MOD case file and, and see that there's a, a litany of, at best, mistakes, at worst, something more sinister. I don't know whether it was sinister or not. Um, it is the case that out of flying hours, some, some radar systems and the radar cameras were switched off. It is the case that sometimes the cameras that we use to record these things broke. I mean, you know, it comes back to the fact, I don't know whether that was conspiracy or cock-up, as they say. I don't well, know. I take the view that it is definitely conspiracy. I was at RF Nutraset at that time, and know for a fact that um, RF Nutraset had two primary radars, both of which had um, radar cameras. Um, members of the MOD came to RF Nutraset, removed radar tapes, and also bridge logs, and there was uh, all the staff, that RF Nutrisid were told, on no uncertain terms, that not to repeat this, and it didn't happen. But I understand that there is a, a line the MOD has to take, but the fact is, the MOD did remove stuff from RF Nutrisid. Whether it backs up what happened in Reynoldshire Forest, I don't know, but I do know the MOD is lying through its teeth about RF Nutrisid, which incidentally is a sector operations centre at the time, responsible for the air defence of the southern half of the United, United Kingdom and um, uh, would have been very, very interested in unidentified aircraft over Britain in the height of the Cold War, and tanks were removed. Thank you. I'm, I'm certainly not... Yeah. I'm certainly not... I'm not disputing that, and, uh, and that's a very important piece of testimony. Thank you.
My name is Miriam Galina and I am from West, Inning in West London. Um, I've got two comments to make and also one question for the panel. Um, first of all, um, I became interested in ufology uh, when I um, read Frank Drake's book, um, Is Anyone Out There? First of all, I would like to thank Larry Warren for his courage and his integrity and to disclose what happened in December 1980. He has been ridiculed and discredited by those with other agendas. Um, to quote Larry, um, to take him out of the equation or to take him out of the picture, you still have a story, regardless of the skeptics and the debunkers. The basic fundamental story is something extraordinary happened in Rendlesham Forest in December 1980, not just on one night, but on several nights. And Peter Robbins said in his presentation earlier this evening that Colonel Holt confirmed in an interview he did with him that this laser beam did disable the nuclear warheads contained in the weapon storage area at Bentwaters. Ladies and gentlemen, if some unknown craft can penetrate our def air defences undetected by radar, that is of immense defence significance, as Nick Pope said earlier on. Because it means we have no defence against these visitors wherever they come from. And an MOD should stop insulting our intelligence on this particular issue. Now the question I have for the panel is this. Um, I would like to know what happened to the film that was taken off the event by the military at the time and which was flown out of the base to Germany. Now, if WikiLeaks could get their hands on that material, that would be worth knowing about, wouldn't it? <laughs> Disaster preparedness uh, said that he himself had taken photos at the site where there were the, the tripod marks and a circle of damage on the trees, but that when he developed his own photos, he wasn't going through a lab, he was developing his own photos, all of the film was fogged, which would be consistent with gamma ray radiation exposure. I like to make one other statement about that. I think I, I don't believe. Okay, I want to I want to break this down so you understand where I'm coming from. I was out there both times. Okay, that there was a lot of people out there. First, well, first time there was. There was no movie films made, and what I mean by that, think about for a minute. We're talking 1980. Okay, what would the power source be to, to run the camera? Okay, but what's not been talked about is the real-to-real -real tapes that were being run at the command post, okay? And those real-to-real -real tapes were being recorded. Not only do I know that, because I worked there, because Colonel Hawley told me. And those had all the radio transmissions of what took place over three nights. Those tapes are gone. And that, that would explain one of the reasons. And the other thing is, is that when the film was done at that time, it was, the, it was put on reels like that. So there's no doubt, and I, I, I've talked to Captain Brown myself about it, there was stuff taken off the base and it was sent over. But I don't really believe there was movie film taken out of it, but there were pictures and the radio transmissions. And I've said all along, for the longest time, if you think the tape got your attention, you should have heard those radio transmissions that happened. It definitely wasn't all I asked for. <laughs> one of the most, um, one, of the most uh, one of the most important documents in the MOD case file is one that comes very close to being a criticism of the Americans, which, it, for those of you who are MOD and, and military, will know is extremely rare. But it's, it's the document that talks about General Gabriel, Commander-in-Chief United States Air Force in Europe, taking possession of the tape recorder and maybe other items, 
So the answer to the question, where did this go? Well, probably with General Gabriel to his headquarters at Ramstein, thence, I guess, back to the DOD, or the Pentagon, wherever, you know. So that's, that's one thing. But look at, that, look at that document, and you'll see that it is as near as I've ever seen a British government document coming to criticising the Americans for not telling us what was going on. Because it finishes up by saying, maybe we could see this material too. You can sense the sarcasm. <coughs> Hello, John. I was just asking you about 1980, when you were in your guard hut uh, at Eastgate, your luxurious uh, guard hut, I mean, a very tiny little thing. Um, now, that was called Eastgate, and uh, you used to do army checks to the back gate, which was on the north side of the base, wasn't it? Which gate? I mean, Eastgate? No, the north gate. It's on the, we used to do the shortcut. You know, the shortcuts across the flight line, across the flight line, flight line and they used to, we used to give them the combination if they wanted to cut across, cut across the bank waters, right? Um, you were doing army checks to the back gate, weren't you? From Eastgate? Colonel Hall was saying that you were going to check on the back gate, Harley, and you saw a light in the forest. We were checking his feet. Yeah, we were down and checking his feet. Yeah, was, I wasn't supposed to delegate the <coughs> we were in the, I was in with my supervisor, and we were riding around, and, and he actually saw the strange lights from Barnett. Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't the east gate, they saw the lights, it was the back gate. It was the east gate. It was what was the back gate, because that, that was the one. That, I didn't feel the back gate that Colonel Hall mentioned about. Because he used to go shortcut and he came across from the head wall through the back gate and down to the east gate. Yeah. I'm just telling you, I was there with the east gate. Yeah. What else, what's the rest of your place? If the east gate is not a, a high fence gate, is it? Isn't it a little no, gate? it's not. It wasn't at the time. It's different today, but it was, it was half the one it was. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I hope that the people know that the landing site is near the base and what it previously was. And on the north side is the landing site in Georgina's Wharf. Actually, is actually on the north side of the base, and it, it's in it, it, the, the place that I've actually got photographs of it. And it's, and it's, and it's still, it's still the site is still there, but the tree's been cut down. Okay, are you, are you trying to say it was on the base itself, or was no? It's on the north side of the base, opposite East Gate. If you look straight across the runway, look straight on the other side, there's a landing site there, and it matches Hogs Cave as well, half of it. Okay, so I'm trying to find you. Okay, maybe it's right. Yeah, I got that. Show me. 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 George M. Bruni's landing site, and the ship's shown up by Vince Stone Shuttle. And if you look at that book, that's Route 10 opposite Folly House, that route down there. And uh, just in the tree line, you know, that was nowhere near your landing site. So that's not north, that's, yeah, that's totally false. And bear in mind, Vince Berger was sort of site like, a week later or something, and he was dead six weeks, was it? Six weeks later, you know, and um, that makes you wonder then, don't it? What, what Ben said, or? Yeah, he showed Georgie and Bruni the site, but that's nowhere near your one. I mean, I wasn't there, so... No, no, no exactly. Um, I also want to say, just to back up to stuff, you know, not far from here is an old psychiatric hospital, and colleagues of mine were working on the top story over that period, what was happening to you, and they saw five balls of orange light hovering over the forest. Not like meteor shower or anything, they were hovering and they were moving away for some time, you know, and they got bored um, looking at them, and they just thought, oh, something's going on in the base. Um, also, my dad, in the days afterwards, went by the base, and he said, there were military um, personnel guarding the edge of the tree line. Now, to my knowledge, that's British territory, so why were they guarding that? If nothing had not gone on in there. That's a fair assessment. I mean, I, I, I think I, 
started by telling you that we really shouldn't have went out there. And, and I'm not trying to put blame on why we went out there, but it really should have been, the British police should have responded out. It, I understand the radar, just, there was a disappearance on radar and I thought it was, and, and I believe the ship commander sent us out on that reason because of the radar and everything else. But in theory, technically, it, the British police should have went out and the, their fire department should have responded. But it was right outside the base and we did go out to try to see what was going on and it didn't work out the way we were hoping it would work out. You know, we didn't hope there was an airline, you know, aircraft, you know, crash either. But it, it took the turn that it did, okay? But as far as what they were doing afterwards, I didn't see that. I know there was activity in the woods, and the reason why I know that is because when I came back to work on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I was put on the East Gate. And what I was told was, they put me there, and they had, it was on swing shift, so it was three to one. And they put me out there for the reason that I'd already been involved in this, and I'd already seen things, and that it wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me if I saw it again, basically. And then if I saw anything strange going on, to call it in on the phone, not by the radio. And there was military aircraft from the base going out there. There was all kinds of things going on out there. So there's no doubt they were out there looking at something. And then Vince himself said there were people out there looking too that, that appeared to be British, you know, British whatever investigators uh, with whatever agency. Nick has an interesting theory. He told me today that it was Americans masquerading as British. <laughs> but he did. He said we trained them to do that. So. I'm not trying to pick on it, but who knows? But there was clearly an investigation going on. So why would they be out there looking around and doing what they were doing if we were chasing the White House? And also, it's interesting that the new information they just picked, sorry, about um, with the new landing site is because for a long time, I think what confused people, and I've always gone by your statement, because I'd say that's the most closest one, and one thing you said, we went 10 to 20 yards down the road. And there was a track going into the woods there. That's no longer there, that's devastated by the um, hurricane. And I think that's what, for a lot of people, they think you went down what was Route 12, and that's hundreds of yards down the road. Right. And that's what throws people out to find in the land and site. Because me and we kind of, we followed the path, what we think was straight through, and it come to where you're now saying the only new land and site is. Well, I'm going to be clear about something. This is 30 years later, okay? I, I didn't take the pictures. I mean, I wasn't the one doing the investigation afterwards, okay? So I can't give you an exact location, and I'm gonna tell you why. I was in the dark. How many people can go out into the dark, never, you know, never, and I, well, not there day, I had no idea what was going on, go out there in the dark, and come back and, you know, go right back to the spot. Um, and even coming back now, it was hard. But what I clearly believed was we were to the right of the farmhouse, and it happened between the right of the farmhouse and to over towards Capitol Green. And what I mean by that is, there's that sliver of trees that come out that match close to what my statement said, okay? And we also felt we were out there, but we did not rediscover the landing site, okay? And we did take some meters out there. We um, looked for some radiation. We did identify an energy field out there two days ago. There was an energy field out there. On, we used some equipment to identify. And one other thing I want to bring up, we took a starlight scope out there. Anybody ever went out there with the starlight scope? Okay, okay. When you point the starlight scope at the lighthouse, it doesn't wink at you. There's not molten coming off of it. There's just a green dot there, okay? So when Colonel Halt made this description of what it looked like, it wasn't him looking at the starlight scope when he by the lighthouse. <laughs> Okay. The whole thing with the binary codes, and, and, and probably people are like thinking, wow, it took this long. It, 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 it came to light with the notebook. Being, what he did was he brought the notebook in October when we were doing the interview, okay? And he started talking about different things, and he flipped it through the thing, and then it was like, what are those? And, and then he said, this is what I wrote down right after it happened, okay? But prior to even saying that, he said he felt like he had a download, okay? All right. So they were analyzed, okay? But what I, I, I can't really say what they said right now because it hasn't been released yet, okay? It's going to be released on the 30th. And the reason why I can't tell you, it's going to be on the History Channel. It's 7 o'clock in the States. But it's, going to be on, it's going to be on the showings in Aliens, okay? You can download it off the computer. You, 
go on the computer and go to the Jutel game. But we're, we're going to hold off until then. And, and honestly, I wasn't necessarily going to be totally discussed tonight. But the fact that we're here tonight on the 28th. Wouldn't you wear tennis all as we're sitting here? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, is we talked about this more in depth tonight than I actually felt comfortable with because it's going to come out. And they're going to want to know why on the 28th we didn't talk about it if it's going to be released on the 30th. Okay? I'm sorry. It's going to come out. It's going to, there's going to be... It's Straight story on the coast. 
They didn't mean anything at the time other than he said at that point when he was talking about things, he felt he had a down one, okay? And then he showed these numbers, which if you look at the numbers, you may be an expert on binary codes. You guys immediately said that's what they were. But in 1980, how many of you knew what a binary code was? Anybody? Okay, that's fair, but we did, okay? And we're and he's just trying to explain to you that we were trying to deal with just what, what was it in the first place. Okay, I think they're, they're questioning credibility of it. Maybe that's no, I, I, no, this is okay. I think I'm following you. No, that's fine. Okay, what about the hypnosis? No, let me go back to the hypnosis. That's where I'm going. 1994, they are all described in the hypnosis. The download, everything. It was done that year. I wasn't supposed to say nothing, brother, but I'm going to make this up to you. Every 30 years, with no disrespect, man. Because this ain't my gig, this is these guys' gig. Yeah. Very important stuff. I understand where you're coming from, but in 30 years, this, the, the popcorn keeps going off. This, that, and the other goes down and gets connected. And some people don't like it. Some people, we don't like it. I don't like the role that I got maybe thrown in. I have no idea. It's, I'm not important, really, am I? But at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff has its time, and you got to understand the times when all this was coming out. Man, you get tarred and feathered saying you saw a UFO, right? There weren't as much pretty girls you see here back in 1983 either, so things have gotten better. So <laughs> we're being celebrity. What they, I don't know what they got there, but they got it, brother, and it's been a long time. They are, these are straight shooting guys, man. I knew them then. I was scared of that. And we were doing a Jack Daniels and Black Cat. Remember that shit? We screamed the cats. That's what they were about. They were, they were straight guys, man. So we hear it from them. That's where it is. I was a nice No, no, no. I agree with you. Thank you very much. I want to kiss you over there. That's very nice. We have here. I don't think you guys understand our mindset. This is the largest tactic fire wing in the United States Air Force at the time. We had things there that just scared the big Jesus out of you. Okay? We can destroy half the world. They say it falls all around us. We're not impressed by these things. Give me a rest! Give me a rest! No, you have to get understand the mindset. I don't know. That's fair enough. You don't understand my mindset. didn't grow up at all. My mindset. Okay, I mean, there is no right, there, there is no kidding around, there is no joking around. I'm in charge of uh, uh, three restricted areas over there I was that night, uh, something like uh, 85 aircraft. I thought there was pilots down in the woods. I thought they were dying. That's what, that's what I'm out there for. Why do you think we got permission to go off base? Because radar contact was lost on a vehicle of some kind. That's why we went off base. Status of forces agreement. Next question. Next question. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, I've got something entirely different for you. What time did you first see the lights? Sometime in the early morning. I'm trying to grab your sub bill. Uh, go ahead and answer because of the change from my time. Okay, yeah. It started right, right around 3 o'clock, yeah, yes. Uh, why was I stopped in a red car uh, just after 10 o'clock by an American military arm on a public highway telling me there's been an incident? Which night was it? That night. Boxing so it was, it, okay, boxing nights the 26th into the 27th. Yeah. And, there, and, it, and we have not covered that there was activity that night. Yeah. But our night was, was started on Christmas night, went into the morning of the 26th. So there would there would have been nobody after, but we haven't covered evidence that there was a second night between the third night. Yeah, well, this is boxing right, which would have been the night of the twenty sixth. Right. right, and not our night because ours started at Christmas. We came on duty on the twenty fifth, and we it happened at 0300 on the twenty sixth, which would not have been boxing night. It would have been early in the morning of the twenty sixth on boxing. Night. It's important, no, before you walk away, we'd like to hear about what happened, because I, I've always said there was three nights, and I had some inside information almost from the beginning, because when I went up to the desk, there was an incident that took place in the forest. So it's important that you 
you talk to us about what you had happened to you and what was going on? Well, basically, boxing match, I was over at Wood Falls, about five miles uh, south of the place. <coughs> right. Uh, and the other one got in there, in the bar. And it must have been about quarter to ten, coming up to ten o'clock. And it is a very bright white glass flying past on a normal fly path. Okay. But the only thing was, it made no noise whatsoever. No noise. And it was so bright, you wouldn't look at it. It set up shadows in the room. So we thought, well, obviously uh, somebody uh, had, had a power in their playhouse, and they're trying to get back to trade. <laughs> and that's when I managed the um, robot. I was a man by America. That's fair, and it is an important piece of information. You know, the other thing is, you know, you shouldn't really hire other people. If someone's got a question, ask them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't care. Yeah, don't bother me. Yeah. I, I, see, I can tell you what I know. No. Uh, you might know this. But I, I read somewhere there was a, police, a British police officer in attendance on one of those nights. Yeah. And that he refused to write down that information in his notebook because he was too scared of being ridiculed. Is that mm -hmm. true or false? Well, it usually happens, but I don't know. He sees too much like the morning after. <laughs> The way, the way this went down, and the interesting thing about the British police, okay, and, and I'll be honest about this, they were called out. But by the time they got out, it was over, as far as what we were encountering, okay, and they met up with us as we came back in. But the, the, the whole thing with the area they found, and, and the indentations, and the radiation, and everything, I, we weren't, him and I weren't involved in that investigation. And if, if he felt there was something wrong, I can understand why he didn't want to talk about it, because what you brought up is fair. We didn't know what we were dealing with, okay? And, and I didn't want to talk about it. And I was, and the statement I wrote was because I was told I had to write one. I don't want to talk about it. And, and, and it's not that I don't want to be here today because the story came out, and I'm here today talking about it, but as far as I was concerned, from the time I dealt with that incident, when I went out there, and, and it, it, I couldn't explain what it was, and, and it was really getting into me about trying to figure out how it happened, what had happened. I wanted it to go away, plain and simple. And, and, and I didn't want to talk about it, and I didn't want to try to explain it because I didn't know how to explain it. And I still can't explain it to you to this day. And for those who are here that believe it was aliens, it's a fair assessment. For those that you believe it was military, fair assessment too. And for me, I'm still trying to find out what it was. Okay, but I do feel I wasn't treated fairly, and I do feel that, th that the answers are still there and they could come out. Okay, and some of the people coming up, like him bringing up the he was stopped in between the two nights. That just reinforces there was another incident. First week in February was the actual um, 
uh, sodium pentothal and OSI building. Um, that's on the paper. So you gave them that binary information there at that point? I have no idea. But you think um, they probably got hold of that information at that point? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, they did give me uh, wrong locations and but other they, things. So they did see that book that you had written all that information in. No, they didn't know I had that book. Oh, so when did you actually reveal that book to you? To OSI? Yeah. I'm telling you what, I got pulled in that Monday morning, scared to death. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not going to tell them about that. I'm not going to tell them about plastic cats. They're going to make them do their own investigations. This is good at it. And uh, then in the February, the uh, first week of February, we uh, got back down the west side uh, building and got the sodium pentothal. You know what? No way. I'm going to give them anything. All they had to do was ask, probably, and I would have revealed it. You know, but no, I always kept them. You know, as soon as that worked with me, I kept No, I was like, Minister, no figure. <laughs> Always kept on. I mean, when do you think the NSA president actually got hold of this binary information? I'm not sure. They could have done it on the, uh, with the sodium. See, I don't know. You can't remember. I don't know. That would be a likely spot, you know, because I remember the first, uh, uh, doing the first statement. I was scared. But, you know, I remember it quite clearly. But I think it had to be done with, uh, with the sodium pentothal. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I freely said, okay, that's a good idea. Sodium pentothal, you guys are not sure about all the facts, you don't know what's going on, you know, the truth. Yeah, okay, I, I'm okay with that. Now, go ahead and just put this thing away, because I'm thinking like he is. I want this to go away. You know, I don't want, I don't want to have to deal with it. But, uh, did that answer your question, or? Okay. Um, i just got a couple of questions for Dr. Jim. Um, there are a lot of questions about extraterrestrials, or time travel, or conspiracy theories, etc. Uh, um, very human questions, really. Um, like you said yourself, John, that you never volunteered for this to happen to you. It wasn't something you wanted, necessarily. It just, it just happened. Um, now, since that time, um, I guess you guys are no longer treated like normal people. Like, you just tonight you can see some people treat you like rock stars. They want your autographs and pictures taken with you. Um, some people treat, think you're weird, you're crazy, and uh, treat you very cynically. Um, you know normal people if you like how this happens. I've got two, I've got two, you are normal people, but uh, you're not treated like normal people anymore. The very fact you're up on stage. I want to know two, two things really. Um, how has it changed you, and do you ever wish it hadn't happened to you? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I had a choice that uh, uh, a couple days before. Jim, do you want to work the Christmas schedule, or do you want to work the New Year's schedule? I spent eight seconds, maybe, to make that decision. The worst decision I ever made in my life. Well, oh, the worst person. That changed my life. It's a life-changing event, for sure. Especially when everything stops and you can't talk about it. You have other people in the Air Force at different assignments coming up to you saying, hey, weren't you uh, the person at uh, that march? Nope. <laughs> nope, can't talk about it, don't even want to it. Class life. Yeah, I got that. Do we like the line life? Absolutely not. This is not about us. <laughs> this is not about us. This is about a story, a situation that happened on your soil that you should be very, very concerned about. Gave that to him, and then that's why I got the cover story. 
which is the paragraph that they put in the uh, internet and Colonel Halt's been passed around. I wonder, I wonder why he's doing that. I don't know, I can't figure that one out. And uh, no, she's part of the cover up. So, uh, you know, my statement's having some light date. I'll tell you right now, the one that OSI on the, uh, uh, that morning, I'll guarantee you that's top secret. What I wrote in there is top secret. <laughs> it's not going to see the light of day. Well, the best chance for us seeing the light of day is actually those audio tapes. They have detailed uh, uh, information of all the radio transmissions of all four channels. Commandment, LE, Security, WSA. Those are the four channels we have. Yeah, so yeah, I, I forgot about that. But actually on the first OSI that came out. <laughs> We're actually tired. I'm not trying to get out of stuff. You know, you know, you know, you know, I changed you. Like, then you wish it had actually happened to you. you uh, I wish it was something else. Yeah. <laughs> did you, did yeah. you have the download? You say when you were touching the symbol. Yeah, it could be coincidence. You know, I don't know. I'm not saying I initiated. I'm just saying that that happened while I was there. As far as having something else happen to, I yeah, uh, anybody but me. But uh, the, the situation that was going on there, I was very comfortable with uh, at the base. Uh, I thought it was a downed aircraft, or at least I was trying to talk myself into it. And uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Stephens says, that's not a downed aircraft, it landed. I'm looking at another guy 15 years ago. That ain't right. <laughs> you know, that ain't right. That don't make sense. So I call uh, on the direct line to uh, CSC. And that uh, is confirmed by radar. We lost contact over Woody, Woodbridge, 15 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, uh, a uh, bogey of uh, unknown origin. Doesn't have a transponder, but that's military aircraft. Don't want to do it, you know? So that was a big deal. But then we lost the aircraft there. Or maybe a neighboring aircraft. We don't know. So I'm now getting the crash kit out. I'm thinking about nothing but dead bodies. Have to recover because I, I haven't seen one. We lost 26 pilots in a while. 26 dead pilots. Wrong move with the A 10s, the cat. One turn, dropping the seat. They named streets after them at Bellwaters. They ran up the streets. Okay, the Colonel Thompson was done at Airshow, I think, though. But uh, yeah, it's great. Okay. If it happened again, I'd go back out there because that's my job. Okay. If I knew what was going to happen, I'd still have to go back out there because that was my job that night. Okay. If I could trade places with you, I'd be happy for you to go out there for me. Okay. Um, this didn't just affect Jim and I, it affected a lot of people. And it tore a lot of people apart. And it, it still bugs us to this day. And there's a lot of anger involved in this, okay? Not just from us, from other people, okay? And there's a lot of people out there that are not sure what happened to us. And, they, and a lot of people don't even like what we're telling them. So, yeah, I'd go back out there if I was on duty and it was my job. I go back out there even if I was on duty, it was my job, and I knew that's what was going to happen. But if I could trade places with somebody, you bet I would. I think it's both. I mean, I don't understand what happened to me, and I can't explain it. Okay. I can do the best that I can based on what I know, what I saw, what I remember, what's come out under hypnosis. Um, but I also don't feel we were treated fairly because I've been, I stayed 26 years before I retired, and I had other things happen to me, no, they weren't UFOs. Okay? But when something went down, we were briefed, we were brought in, we were, you know, or I dealt with my troops I was in charge with, and we were just left out in the hand of dry hands. And as Nick has said, it could be very well they didn't know what to do with it either, okay? And they didn't know how to deal with it. But at the same time, we should have at least been checked out medically because we did off go, go out base and have something happen to us. Uh, the other thing I think you got to keep in mind is I don't believe in all that evil stuff. Okay. Never have, never will. 
which is interesting. So I'm out there looking for a security issue. My only job is render assistance, life threatening or whatever it is. Render assistance, establish a control point, make sure it's upwind. I can go through the whole checklist. Okay. I know exactly what we gotta do. I'm gonna go do it. That's what I was gonna do. But <laughs> the only second part of my job was when I determined it was a possible security threat to the installation, which I did, and I would tell them like helping handle report, that's what we call it. Possible security situation. At that point in time when I did that, my whole focus was on one thing which I was trained on. He was trained on too. Kabanzak was trained on too. Report exactly what you see. Exactly what you see. Our job is not to determine what it is other than a security threat. I can't a security threat five minutes into it. It was benign. It wasn't doing nothing. The people that had made the decision went back to Central Security Bureau. That's not my job. My job is to report what I see. That's what you do. <clears throat> report everything you see. Let them figure it out. That's not my job. I don't get paid to do that. Nothing more. There's nothing more to it. The only thing is that he said that they never released their names and stuff. And the reports. That was guaranteed by Colonel Hall. Bless him for that one. He did a good job in it. Yeah, I'm angry at him. Don't believe Colonel's. <laughs> yes. Yeah, just wonder, being such a secure base and you know having lights in the sky and all this happening, did they not um, you know scramble aircraft to intercept? No, there was no there was no uh, flying on Woodbridge or that one. It was down for flying on um, both of those days. At least probably for probably three days up to the Monday. And uh, but they would have scrambled out like lightning. lightning would have been one. I think they had F-15s at the time or some some of the fast aircraft. You know what I'm talking about, like, you know, four or five minute flight time. Yeah. That was down. They didn't fly. No, their mission was sixty seventh was that uh, was that uh, lightning for that night. You said you went to the Mm-hmm. No, Colonel Hall was not at the West Side building. There was two unidentified agents. Colonel Hall called the security police ordinance. Probably talked to Major Sickler. I don't know. I don't know who talked to. Probably the man. And, the, and they called. Huh? I don't know. I'm just telling you the facts, ma'am. I don't know. I'm just telling you. I don't want to guess this stuff, all right? That's what we've done enough of that here. <laughs> no, I just, just Well, I don't care. I got orders, I got a call, I go to the order room, the base commander says report to OSI. I go, okay. I don't care where the Colonel Hall is. I do my duty, I do my job. I go down there. He wasn't he wasn't in the uh, OSI bill. I don't know, I can't you know tell you anything else where his location was. I have no idea, I didn't care. Who? Oh, no, he was on orders from another agency. That... Excuse me, can we just, uh, we do have a queue here of questions, yeah. please, if you don't mind? Close it to your mouth, please. Sorry? Close it to your mouth. I'm pushing it hard. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk without it. If you like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yes, thanks everybody for coming. I do have a question that will be interesting to everybody. And it concerns something that was in Brenda's book, Sky Crash. Uh, I can't remember actually what the thing stands for exactly. I can't get the last letter. But did, uh, can I ask this to all the members of the panel, what do you think about the one of the manifestations <coughs> on the 30th of December that was uh, seen by Art Wallace? Does, uh, do any of you think that this was a space recovery craft? Uh, multiple unit uh, space transport and recovery? It was not a bad one. No, I know it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> no, didn't fly at night once. Other folks? Okay, I'll 
Switched off are very unlikely anyway, yeah? But, but anyway, cold war impossible. there was no way they would be switched off. I mean, no one really does believe that anyway. But <laughs> more importantly, um, were, are you saying that you were all put under some kind of um, sodium, you know, um, sort of mind drug to mess with that bait with you or not? I know I was. I know I was. You um, were? Yeah. Uh, I think you said the same, yeah? yeah I, you, uh, Larry definitely has said that he sort of had been messed about with so on and so forth. There's one concern with that whole concept. You are the best witnesses to everyone here, yeah? Right? So there is a danger that if you've been messed with and you have an unclear picture, we will never, ever find out the absolute truth. That was the point. Yes. That's the point. That's, that's the cover. And am I the only person to have thought that? But that's the thing, we never will. You've come here, we're, we're hoped we would find out a little something, but all you've come here and said is, I'm not clear. Well, a lot of it's like that, but I'll, I'll say this about the post. I mean, they were done the, the day after the incident, they were verified with the uh, hypnosis in 94, um, and then what's in them? Well, that's... Does it give us any answers, though? I've, I've had hypnosis done myself. The thing, as we all know, is you're perfectly awake. Yeah? Okay. You can snap out of it whenever you like. No. Well, okay. when I've been under hypnosis, it's, they will tell you if you want to come out of it, you can come out of it. Yeah? So you are completely conscious. <laughs> I don't remember the hypnosis. I have to watch the tour. But this is the thing a lot of what we've seen here tonight is like under hypnosis, which is a best maybe. Uh, you'd appreciate that, yeah? Yeah, you gotta stop and think that, uh, you know, there was a uh, container procedure to handle that, yeah. You're right. Yeah, That's so what the overall concept is no one will ever find out. Okay. Well, yeah. the next year. That's always true. Okay. Here, 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 here's, the, here's, the, here's something that I'm gonna bring up again. First of all, I wasn't aware of the cause. I didn't see them written down until October, and it was in his original notebook, and I looked at it over. That's the first time I'd seen the number. And there's something to me, okay? Now, when it gets released on Thursday, and it'll be all over the internet and everything, it'll be up to you to decide. But if the fact that I didn't understand binary codes, and, I, and they didn't attack me like that, but I, I didn't know anything about binary codes right up until I was told that they were looked at, and this is what they said. And from what I've been told, and I'm telling you this not because I have, I'm an expert, but these are legit things that happen, and they mean something. And the fact that these codes, are, excuse me, okay, they mean something, okay? 
And the thing is, is that once it comes out, it may help. It may help clear up a few things. It may not. There's no secrets with this. What we're trying to do is we want to get the paper verified for you, you know, as part of it. And then and with the inks and you know, the correct timeline when that came out, the quotes written down. We want all that stuff in there as one package. Just believe us, one thing we have learned about Reynolds in the 30 years of it, the skeptics and questions and how to handle it. And that's how you handle it. You put all the evidence out and we'll lay it out. That's how you do it. But on the on the No, it's okay, but it's somebody else could. You put it all out. This person over here will pick one little bit of it. We put it all out. Well, well, with testing the paper, uh, oh, that won't be easy. Oh, okay. You, you, you gotta say that you, uh, you, just, you want to try to come out with digital assets just to make it sort of report the clients. With that, yeah. 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 United States, <laughs> or any prototype aircraft, I see the of The capability of it, the technology, was no superpowers, no exhaust, no intake, solid black in color, and no sound in generation of uh, takeoff with no air displacement. Impossible. About my class. There's nothing today that can fly with no noise like that at that speed. So. You go out whatever you want. I'm saying it's not one of the James Book of known aircraft, or it's something that's sitting in Area 51. That's all that is, by the way. It's extraordinary aircraft, by the way. There's nothing else there. So. Because we want to, we actually want to control the uh, information that goes out. We've been burned in the past with it, so we want to make sure that we have to control and put out a rational man. Um, please, can I just say, if there's any questions, can you please come and use the mic so everybody at the back can actually hear what is being asked? Thank you. I have a question for Tom Burroughs. It's, it's been reported that. You actually walked up to the craft and actually rode along on it. Is that correct? You asked people about it in the, the discrepancies and hypnosis. I remember getting close to something twice, okay? And then I can't answer for sure what happened at that point. And I've been clear about that from day one when the, the story broke and I've been asked. Okay, under hypnosis, it says that something did happen. What, you actually got on the thing and were carried along? No, they, I went into something and, and that, that, that whatever it was, I wasn't You actually lost time? Do you think you were abducted at that point? I, see, you want me to say I was abducted and I don't know. I okay, don't know. Did you lose a large chunk of time? They, they, both from the first night we were told they lost us, they had lost radio contact for 45 minutes. Okay? And on the third night, there was no report of, of, of uh, lost radio contact. But what I can tell you, what I remember, is especially on the third night, I was getting close to something, and then whatever it was was gone. And I turned around, and they were, everyone was behind me. And I don't know how I got that a little bit further, and I, and I couldn't understand where it went. Because it was like I was here, in front of him, and then it was gone. Okay. And that's some of the, what I'm trying to explain to you guys, you don't have to like it, but I can't explain how it happened. I don't know why it happened, and I can't, I can't honestly tell you what it was. And I'd like to know. And, and if the government doesn't know, then they can say that. But obviously there's ramifications with that, too. But the point being is, is I, I honestly don't know for sure. And I don't have a problem with people not liking the hypnosis. And there are open determinations on what it means and it doesn't mean. But the codes are there, and they mean something. And, we'll, okay, you asked the question about the news. Let's see what they do with it. It's going to come out. It's going to be there. They're going, it's going to be there, and everyone that watches it or sees it or reads about it, can, why don't you call the news and ask them? 
hey, why don't you go home tonight, the ones that don't understand what they are, and look them up and see if they're legit. I mean, can you say whether it's code or program or a combination of both? Or data, data or program. <coughs> binary code, can that be data or it can be program? It can actually program a virtual machine. It can make a computer do something. There's a lot there. Okay, there's, there, there, there'll, there'll be a brief statement on some of what it is. And uh, let's, let's do this. Let's see what the two guys want. Okay, the codes are there. They mean something. Take a look at them, see what you think. And you don't have to watch the channel to do it. They'll be online, and they're also, I'm sure people will assume, there's probably people talking about it right now. But it's there, and, and it's, why is it there? Okay, we can argue about, should we release it earlier, should we understood it, should we know all that? Okay, but it's there, and it does mean something, okay? And, and it's fair to say, take a look at it. You don't have to like it, but take a look at it and see what you think. But it's, it bothers me. And I don't understand why it would be there. I don't understand. I don't like what it says. It's about. But will be accessible online. Well, yeah, I'm sure as soon as it hits, there's going to be a lot of things. You know how it works. Okay, you say something now before you get out the door. If it's something that's important. Right? Okay. Yeah. There's a rescue units. Is there for? And also, was there a practice that might, even if it's not as I spent 26 years, and I retired in the middle. Of, right after I went, I, I went to. I did two tours over in, in the Middle East after, you know, after 9/11. Okay, and, I, and as the years went by, 60 or ARS, you know, pararescue, you got more and more into different things. But where I was stationed, and what I what I saw them do, and what went on was. Their primary mission was to rescue pilots, okay? And that was if there was an airplane crash or whatever, that was their job. They also worked on other things, you know? Some of it was classified, some of it wasn't. There was a capsule, you know, a space capsule there, but the Paul program was over. But that's all up to the bay. But the bottom line was, I can tell you this, on the night of the 25th, when we came on duty, <laughs> into the morning of the 26th, the air code was shut down. There was no but he the control tower were there. The runway lights were off. All the aircraft were buttoned down. All the helicopters were buttoned down. If there would have been activity, we would have had the arts doing certain things, and we would have known the aircraft would shut off. And then also, it, I think most people are familiar with what a helicopter sounds like. And would you not say the woods are pretty quiet at night? So if I'm out there in the woods, Especially when I work around the aircraft, but I did not know if there was a helicopter rolling. So, yes, they did work with the Apollo program. Yes, their job, primary job was search and recovery for downed aircraft. And they had other duties too. Okay, but on our night, when Jim and I went out there, and too, I wish she could do it, there was nothing in the air. Okay. Any more questions, please? <laughs> Can you come forward, please, so everybody else can hear you in the back? Thank you. Uh, along with rumours of an underground facility, is there any confirmation? Wing Operations Center is a basement. They have uh, uh, six vault doors. Normal, wing, normally, Wing Intel has their offices down there, and they also keep uh, uh, different type of flight reconnaissance things down there, and that's over the big wing ops building. And it could be confused by a disorientated young man as on the ground facility that's four rooms long. And, and I'll go a step further. A lot of you people are, are from around here, and you know what the water table's like, okay? So the odds of a huge underground complex, I, what I've been told, not me personally knowing and checking, but it's pretty rare. But there was a facility that had something that went underground, and underground was like a basement. And Marshall Heath had a partial. They had a partial at Marshall Heath. That has nothing to do with this. Right. But if you were being messed with and drugged or whatever, it could be easily construed. And believe me, when it comes to interrogation, I think most people have seen movies and stuff. Why well, that's true. They can make you think something's going on. But there was a facility where it could appear to be an underground.
Does that help? Is there any other questions, guys? Go ahead and ask. Okay. I honestly don't know what the history channel schedule is. Talked about it, okay. Um, 
you're making statements about colossus and documents, there's this, there's that. And, and it's what he says, I says, and everyone else says. And, and there's clearly something that isn't right, okay? And that's how I take this. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the gentleman on this, we may never know for sure, okay? But I think we're getting closer because as Colonel Hall's retired and he's gotten older, he seems to be opening up more. We're trying to be honest, you know, with everything that we've got. We've, we've introduced the hypnosis, whether you like it or not. The codes are there. You, when they come out, look at them and, and verify if the codes are true and if they're right and see what they say and see how you feel about it. But ultimately, there's more stuff starting to come out, and I can't even explain it why. But I'm here because I want to know what happened. And I'm, I went out back out there to try to figure some things out. And s things don't add up to me either. There's things that I recognize or hear, or this doesn't look right, or we really couldn't be there. It just doesn't seem like we could have been there to get from here to here to here that quick. Okay? But what I do know this is we would have followed it straight in, and we did have an encounter that I can't explain. And it gets weirder, not because we're trying to mislead you, lie to you, or misguide you. We're telling you what we know. If you don't like it, that's fair. You don't have to. But we're the ones that are living with it every day.